for you guys to see something that's new in the classroom. For the second graders at Mammoth Heights Elementary, just about every day is a chance to try something new. I like this. We ah, I like it. Today, it's new chairs. We were surprised today that we had like these awesome chairs that we could move around And I was like, in. what happened to the chairs? These chairs are especially made for kids because kids need to wiggle around. And as you might have guessed, second graders have a lot of wiggles. Yes. Show me, show me your wiggles. I want to see wiggles. Oh my goodness. This is more than a classroom. It's a place where new concepts in education, even how to channel kids' energy, can be tested. What do you guys think? Oh. I want to conduct a little experiment. I want to see if being able to wiggle a little bit in those chairs might help that writing. It helps you get out your wiggles when you're writing, so it makes your brain bigger and smarter. What distinguishes a marine biome? It's not easy, but Mary Lisa Harper says change is needed. I looked out and, I, and the little teacher in my head that has been teaching for 20 years said, oh no, how are you going to deal with this? Because you look out, everything's moving, but it's what kids need. I mean, that's the paradigm shift. We all need to accept that kids are going to wiggle and their brains are more active when they do. She and her digital native students, those that have grown up their entire lives with computers, were anxious, just wiggling for something different. The focus is on kids. The Earth's rotation causes that season change. Having taught second grade for the last five years, every year I notice how much they need a different model. That Victorian model is ingrained in us. I have the picture of my aunt in the classroom and she's teaching, all the kids are sitting in rows and, they're do and she is the deliverer of all knowledge. It's just not like that anymore. To be honest, I was getting bored with the textbook teaching. I, I knew that something w was going to have to happen in my career in order to invigorate me to be the best for kids. Mary Lisa set off to design a classroom of the future or a primary innovation studio, a place where new technology, that is correct, teaching techniques and research can be tried and shared today and she hopes for years to come. That's why I called this a studio. It is always a work in progress. There is no end to this journey. And while it's only been a few weeks, the kids seem to love it so far. I'm glad I got picked in this class. Me too. That in itself is quite a change because only a few short months ago, no one wanted to be here. This actually is the most unpopular classroom in the whole school. Nobody wants to be in here. That all changed over the summer as Mary Lisa's vision began to take shape. Thanks to the support of the district, including some hard work by our operations department and a generous grant from the Mortgage Family Foundation, a welcoming state-of-the-art learning space was created, one designed around supporting kids as they learn and use 21st century skills. There's really a space for each of the four C's. That's um, how I designed it. Creativity, the maker space. Um, communication, there's a stage. Critical thinking you see with whiteboards that are lower and the collaboration just absolutely everywhere. And while cool touchscreen computers and iPads have certainly fueled collaboration in many lessons, the biggest change has been in teaching. Why? I think th the shift is more within the teacher than the technology. I mean, I could have five iPads and be teaching with great 21st century skill and craft and it could be a 21st century classroom. We will learn together. The big shift is within. It's how you approach kids. Up in my tree how you understand that they're a different breed right now when it comes to learning. While Mary Lisa readily admits that she doesn't have all the answers, she believes that someone has to lead the way. You're a black and yellow tiger. If we settle for a mediocrity and nobody tries, we're never going to get anywhere. She hopes that lessons learned in the innovation studio will be implemented in other classrooms at Mammoth Heights and across the district. I will share with them the, the good, the bad, and the ugly, but things do need to change and hopefully I'm a pioneer of sorts. Awesome.